Okay, let's talk about proteins. A protein is a macromolecule that contains uh, three elements that we're familiar with, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we see those in lipids and carbohydrates. And we have a new one, nitrogen. It's monomer. Remember, a monomer is a single unit. It's, a, it's an amino acid. And the polymer is called a polypeptide. And we can also call this um, essentially a protein. And proteins have a, a lot of functions. They're very important inside of the body. They can help control the rate of reactions. They can regulate cell processes. They can form cellular structures. They can transport substances in or out of a cell, and they can also help fight disease. So let's look at the monomer. Remember, monomer is the single unit of some sort of macromolecule. So the, the amino acid is a compound that has two special groups, and actually it has three, and we'll talk about what the R represents in a little bit. But first we have the amino group, which is made up of N, H2, a nitrogen and two hydrogens attached, and then the carboxyl group, which has a carbon with a double bond to oxygen, and then a bond to what is called hydroxide. Okay, and that, that's what makes up an amino acid. When a protein is made, or the polymer is made, the bond between each amino acid is now called a peptide. So here we have a single, this is our generic structure uh, with an amino group, carboxyl group. Here we have a very specific type of amino acid called alanine. And here we have another specific amino acid called serine. When you bind these two together, what you get in the middle is called a peptide bond because this now is going to form a polypeptide. So the bond between it is called a peptide bond. All amino acids are identical within the amino group and the carboxyl group. So but all amino acids have the amino group, carboxyl group. But where they differ is where we see this R group. The R group, uh, we don't have an element called R, but the R represents the fact that there can be many different types of structures that get attached here. So for alanine, CH3 attaches. For serine, CH2 with a um, hydroxide attaches. And that's what makes this, uh, this particular amino acid called serine. That's what makes this one called alanine. Very specific. There's approximately 20-ish, maybe 22, 23 different amino acids that are found um, in nature. And now we want to talk about the levels of protein um, organization that we have. So proteins can be structured in four different levels, and that's what can allow us to have many different types of proteins that, do, that have many different jobs inside of the body. So the first type of protein is called primary structure. It's basically a chain of amino acids, the structure of amino acids. And you can show it basically in a list. So over on the picture, we have an entire list of amino acids that are strung together. And we also have over here a list of amino acids that are just in order of how they are chained together. That is called the primary structure. We have secondary structure, which is looking at those amino acids chained together and how are they foil, uh, folded or coiled together? And we have two different types of se uh, secondary structure. We have the beta pleated sheets or the alpha helix. And those are the sh um, letters for beta and alpha. So the beta pleated sheet looks exactly how you see. It's this sheet that is kind of zigzaggy in three-dimensional space. And the helix, the alpha helix, looks just like an alpha helix and really in the 3D shape it's kind of like a coil like that okay beta pleated sheet zigzaggy so if I ever asked you to draw a beta pleated sheet or an alpha helix to represent the secondary structure of a protein 
you would probably draw them like that. Okay. The tertiary structure is taking a look at that uh, secondary structure and how is it actually arranged as a, um, a 3D polypeptide chain. So here you could see the beta pleated sheets and then it kind of does some alpha helix things over here. Okay, and how is this entire thing, this particular protein, arranged um, together? And then lastly, we have quaternary structure, and that's looking at the way that different polypeptide chains come together. So different tertiary structures coming together to form that quaternary structure. And we have an example of that. We can look at hemoglobin, and hemoglobin is a very special protein inside of, inside of blood, and its job is to carry iron around your blood. And so here's its structure. You have this white one here and this white one or this light purple one that are in, um, one type of structure. And then this deep purple one right here that is its own different. And there's two of them here and then two of the white ones. And that's how they're structured together. And that's how they fit together in quaternary structure. So if we look at this picture, you can take, right here I have a cord, um, it's a phone charger, and I can look at the different structures by just looking at this. So right here, the straight portion of the cord, this is considered the primary structure. I would have a bunch of amino acids lined up in a straight row. We have secondary structure, which is how are those amino acids laying on top of each other. So if you look at the cord, this would represent secondary structure. How does it lay upon each other? We have tertiary structure. So if I take this cord, right, that's already wound up, it's already in secondary uh, structure, how does it lay on top of itself? So maybe it's going to come in the shape of this structure. Or maybe it's going to be something like this. If I can make it stay. Right, coiled among a coil. Just like that, you can see it. Okay, and then lastly, if I take that tertiary structure, something like this, and I bring in another one, so let me create that. Okay, how do they lay amongst each other to create a bigger macromolecule? All right, that's it for proteins.